Hi everybody, welcome back. Well, as you can see, it's uh, woolly pulley weather again. Uh, it's turned cold in the north of England uh, this week. Uh, and it doesn't seem long ago, it's only uh, probably four or five weeks since that I couldn't do any painting in here because it was so hot, the paint was just uh, misting away. So times have uh, changed. Now this time, uh, I'm splitting the video this week into two parts because I've not had a lot of bench time on the Bismarck this week. And that's partly because I've been making a strong effort to finish the Tamiya 148 scale Mustang. You might be able to just pick it out on the shelf behind me. It's nearly finished. Just one or two bits and pieces to do on that. And that will be appearing as the first of the Aces series, very belatedly. I started that back in uh, January, so it's high time that that was finished. But because of concentrating on that a little bit at the beginning of the week, I've not been able to do that much on the Bismarck. Uh, but this time, in this first part of the two-parter, I'm going to be stripping the bulkheads of this after superstructure uh, and fitting all the photo etch. And then in the next part, which will follow on in the next couple of days, I'll be doing the rest of the detailing. So building some of the other platforms, detailing the hangar in here, uh, and also fitting some of the wooden decks. Both of these uh, superstructure levels have wooden decks on them, so I'll be fitting those. But in this one, as I said, I'm going to be doing the photo etch work. Now a lot of it is very similar to the superstructure work that I did earlier on in the series on the superstructure decks, the ones below this. So there's a bit of repetition, so that's why I'm trying to cut the video down a bit this week. But I'll show you what I've done, so let's get the camera up uh, and we'll make a start. Okay, we're going to start this week uh, with these two uh, trumpeter parts, which forms the bulk of the after superstructure. So uh, this one just fits inside like that. So this is part Z4 and this is uh, A2. And the work that we have to do on these two parts is shown here on this uh, part of the Pontos instructions. Uh, not particularly easy to follow. A2 shows the port starboard side and the aft side of that structure. So that's easy enough. But this part Z4 is covered in two drawings. So basically this drawing here covers uh, this starboard side. And the drawing above, confusingly, shows the port side and the wrap around the aft side as well. Once you've worked that out, it's not uh, too difficult. The first thing we've got to do is to clear a lot of this detail, not all of it though, some of it has to remain. Uh, the bits that remain are shown in grey on these drawings. So we're just going to have to be careful not to take off more than we need to for these parts. So I'm going to start off with this smaller section and I'll use a combination of files and a chisel blade knife to get this detail off. Just thinking about last week's work, which was uh, setting up the catapults and the Arado hangar rails, and 
I think I mentioned in that that I wasn't uh, happy with having the Stodorado in the hangar right next to the aircraft on the catapult. And I think quite a few of you agree with that. It's a bit crowded. So I have decided to uh, alter the configuration and put the Stodorado into one of the funnel hangers. And I think that'll balance out the composition a little bit better on the model. I wasn't quite sure how the aircraft was stowed actually and that's what was holding me back from making a decision but I got a really helpful email from Casey this week with some photographs. They're actually of the Tirpitz aircraft and hangars but it confirmed that the aircraft could be stowed either way either nose in or tail in to the hangars and I think on reflection I'm going to stow it nose in so the tail will be sticking out of the hangar door at the back and throughout a build like this over the weeks and months I get an awful lot of help from people watching the videos that have got some great photographic resources and it's photographs that you need really to decide on some of these uh, details on these models and the help I get from people is just absolutely incredible really when you're doing a complicated build like this it's really helpful saves time trawling around the internet myself when I can be in here actually doing the build so those of you that uh, have helped me out in recent weeks with this Bismarck build as I said it's much appreciated It's all cleaned up. I've made a nasty gouge on this vent here so hopefully the uh, Pontos brass replacement will cover that up. I'll check that beforehand and if it doesn't I'll uh, just have to put some filler in there so I was a bit clumsy with that. Next we'll uh, clear this part Z4 and there's quite a bit more to do on this all the uh, hand rungs on the uh, hanger roof here they're all replaced with photo etch so I need to remove those as well Pontos provides some drilling templates for the little holes for those as well. Now on a door uh, moulding like this here all I'm doing is rather than trying to get the whole door moulding off I'm just taking the moulded plastic uh, hinges off that because it's far too tight to get a knife in here to remove the whole door plate uh, without damaging this adjacent detail these two scuttles here that need to be retained so I'm just going to err on the side of caution and just remove the surface detail on that door so I can put the new brass door over the top of it. This door is a bit tricky because it's on a curved section of the bulkhead. So I'm just using this curved blade 
to follow the contour of the bulkhead to get that down. Again, I've got to be careful because there's a piece of retained detail here. I think that's cleaned up. It's quite a lot to get off that for such a small part. So that's ready for the photo etch. <laughs> There's also some bits and pieces of trumpeter plastic to go onto these as well, so I'll probably fit those at the same time. Onto the photo etch now. You can see that uh, the frets are starting to empty. This particular fret, most of these parts went on to the superstructure deck assemblies that uh, I built a few episodes ago. But it also contains all the replacement doors, and I like to start these bulkheads by positioning the doors because what that does is it gives you. A visual reference uh, for fitting some of the other photo etch because the Pontos instructions as they're laid out which I've shown you earlier uh, the drawings actually wrap around structures so positioning the doors just helps you locate uh, where you are on the part so it just makes it easier so we'll make a start with uh, these doors and Pontos provide the doors uh, in this sort of format so that you can fold them over. Another trick that I've found is helpful uh, with these type of drawings is to just mark off where the bulkheads uh, change angle. It just helps to uh, locate the parts again. So this just gives us which section we're on as we move around the aft side of this structure and towards the front here. All the doors are fitted there and actually there's an error in the Pontos instructions which tell us to fit a door here on this protrusion uh, and it wasn't it was some sort of uh, cupboard probably an electrical cupboard 
that didn't have a standard door on it. So uh, it's unfortunate that because it showed a door, I've sanded the detail off that, which is a pity. But uh, if you're building this, don't do anything with these, just leave them as they are. This next fret has got some of the finer detail on some of the uh, windows, covers and vents as well. So just a case of working through these until we've got them all fitted. The uh, next step with these bulkheads is to fit this very fine strip of brass all the way around. This is actually in two parts. And I just apply this uh, stage by stage uh, with some extra thin super glue. Uh, just wicked into the joint, hold it down and it grips pretty well to the bulkhead at that point. The uh, reason for fitting this next is that a lot of the other parts, the vents and so on, come very close to this. And if you get the vents fitted first and slightly out of position, it's very difficult to uh, align this strip around the top. And the thing is with fitting this is that often it will only go in one position. So here we've got a slight kink in the strip as it goes down this step in the bulkhead here so there's no other place for that to go and once you've got that located in a certain place uh, you just lie the rest of the strip down it needs to be trimmed at the back here where the two pieces join because there's some excess in the photo etch but uh, it's fairly easy to fit is that as long as you're careful and do it step by step Next step is the vents, and these are two of them already fitted, port and starboard. And they're made up of a rear screen, a front screen, and a number of individual louvers on them. And I've worked out what I think is the best method for putting these together, which I'll go through with you now. They are fairly awkward, or at least getting the louvers in position and getting them reasonably straight is the hardest task, really. If you don't get them straight, they just look a bit uh, untidy. But uh, we'll do the next one on camera. I'm not going to do all of them. I think I've got about eight to make on this uh, assembly, these two assemblies. So I'm going to do this large one here that hopefully will cover this gouge up. You can see the number of vents here. These are for the whole ship, obviously, but I've got quite a few of these to build for this particular section. These large ones here are for the funnel sides, I think. So we've got a front and a back. And then these are the louvers. That's good, we will cover that scar up. So put the mesh on first. Okay, and then the front screen is this part here. And we've got a number of 
very small bends to make. There are some side pieces to each louver and each of those have got to be bent up. So in this particular case there are nine louvers on each of these vents. So these are quite time consuming really. They probably take a good 10-15 minutes each. And I've just counted up there are seven to make in this particular assembly. So I'll just make sure all those little, uh, I suppose the rests really for the louvers. Just make sure that they're at 90 degrees. And then we place that on top of the part that I've just put in. And that goes down on top of the screen. Just making sure that we've got the louver supports the right way up. And then we can fit each of the individual louvers. Now the reason for fitting these uh, screens at this stage in this way and then putting the louvers on, uh, it just gives you something to hold on to. You've got this whole structure to hold on to whilst each of these louvers is fitted. And I work from the top down. Just while I'm fitting these, just going back to the point I was making about the uh, help I get from viewers building these models. Uh, I've had a couple of other people contact me over the last week. Also, the first is uh, Christopher, who I think is in Malta. I'm sorry if I've got that wrong, Christopher. But uh, he sent me an enormous file uh, full of reference photographs for the Bismarck, which is really, really helpful. Um, the Photographic reference, as I said, is the thing to get if you can. And this file is absolutely invaluable. So thanks for that. The other person that um, has been a support right from the start of this build is Klaus, who again has sent information through and given little bits of uh, advice on the configuration of the model. So Christopher and Klaus and Casey earlier on, thanks for all that support, it really does help the build. It also means I've got no excuses for getting things wrong with all this fantastic reference. Sometimes they're just a little bit uh, awkward, they don't want to come off the tweezers. Sometimes they come straight off like that. You can see how much harder it would be to fit these louvers whilst trying to hold on to the screen. So I'm much happier with this method of doing these. I've learnt a bit late in the day, unfortunately, uh, since I've already built quite a few of these already on the uh, lower bulkheads. That was just a bit reluctant again to come off. So with a something like that it's just not going to come off there it doesn't matter how many try times I try so I just need to clean both the tweezers and the part and start again it's no good struggling with it I'll just give the tweezer tips a quick swipe it's maybe time to invest in a new pair of tweezers or a new set 
they are one of the most important tools that we use in uh, ship modeling if you're using a lot of photo etch pretty essential to have good tweezers so the quick clean no problem at all then so it's worth every now and again just giving the tools a quick wipe over makes the job a lot easier so I've got another four of these to do which I'll do off camera come back after that but you can see the idea that uh, fitting the screen onto the bulkhead first and then the louvers it's just easier gives you something to hold on to this set of vents is the uh, trickiest of the seven uh, you can see the size of each individual louver so there are 28 of these louvers to fit they're about what two two and a half millimeters wide it's uh, at times like this fitting these tiny pieces of photo etch that uh, you wonder whether it's the same thing to do really it does look nice when it's finished though Just got a bit too much CA on that part, so I'll rub it off straight away with the fiberglass pen. Comes off absolutely clean, especially if you do this straight away before the glue's had time to cure. For those of you that know what this is, I'm sorry to repeat myself about what it is but it's the most commonly asked question I get whenever I get this uh, pen out people always ask what it is okay so I've been uh, all around these bulkheads fitted all the photo etch to them and it really does busy the bulkheads up a lot the Bismarck bulkheads are a lot uh, more detailed than the ones on the hood that I built and they look really nice I mean it is a chore to do some of these uh, bits and pieces but uh, the end result looks a lot better than the basic trumpeter kit the only thing uh, that I've got left to do are the ladder rungs on this uh, starboard side. I've fitted them to the port here. There's two sets going up the bulkhead of the hangar and onto the hangar roof here. They're fitted in exactly the same way that I did a few episodes now ago when uh, I fitted these similar sort of ladder rungs onto the stern of the ship. So it's the same method. I'll just do one or two on this side just to show you again, just as a reminder. But I'm not going to do them all on camera. We use uh, these templates that Pontos provide. And these are pretty essential really. It's not possible, I wouldn't have thought, to fit these ladder rungs without these templates. In this particular case, this uh, forward template has a fold on it. And that helps us to locate the part precisely onto the bulkhead. Onto the angle of the roof like that. And I use some clear tape to fix them into place. Because you don't want these templates to move around once you start drilling it's important that all the holes uh, are consistent so 
they need to be secure. So that's not going to move, which is important because the precision of the photo etch rungs is so fine that uh, if you get these holes slightly out of line they're not going to fit. So nice secure fix in there. And I use a 0.3 millimeter drill but always in a motor tool I never use fine drills like this by hand I'll just break too many if I do the motor drill just is a bit more positive I think when you're using a fine drill like this. These drills are really delicate, you have to be careful with them. And I'll carefully remove the tape, I don't want to pull any photo etch off. So nice and gentle. And you should be left with a nice neat set of holes ready for the ladder rungs. And you can see how many we have to fit on the ship altogether. There's several rows here, uh, probably with 30 or so on each row. So there's an awful lot of, uh, of these to fit. I'll just do two or three on camera. So you just dip these in a little bit of medium CA and then just attach them into the hole and as I said the photo etch template is so accurate that those uh, rungs go in without any difficulty. They're actually a lot easier than they might appear when you see them uh, on a model finished up. Uh, there's just an awful lot of them so you've just got to have the patience to attach these individually. So that's how it works. As I said, I'm not going to do the whole thing on camera, but eventually, if you work methodically, you just get down to uh, all these fitted. I think there are 21 or 22 just on each side. But they are a big improvement, as I said, on the trumpeter. So it's worth doing those. So I'm going to call that it for this uh, particular episode but as I said at the beginning this is a two-parter really. Uh, my aim was to get the photo etch done in this first part uh, and then I'll move on in the next part to prime paint uh, and add some more detail to this uh, structure. We've got some boat racks to fit on the side of the hangar here and some photo etch associated with that as well. We've also got the range finders to fit on the back here and hopefully I'll be able to fit the wooden decks. These uh, two decks here are both wooden so we've got those in the Pontos set to fit. 
So uh, a little bit more work to do on this, which is why I split the episode up this week into two parts. So I'll be moving straight on uh, with the work that I've just described and I'll be posting a video on that early next week. So this two-parter will be done by probably Tuesday. And then hopefully we'll be moving on to something else uh, for next week's uh, premiere, which will be Friday night. So I'll hopefully uh, see you for the second part of this particular part of the build. If you put your notifications on, uh, you'll get a message to say that that video is available. As I said, it's probably going to be Monday or Tuesday next week. So I hope you can join me for that. In the meantime, uh, look after yourselves, everybody, and I'll see you in a few days. Bye for now.